Hi, and welcome back to the Christian Minute podcast. My name is Anne Markey, and I'm the host of this podcast. I'm also a Christian speaker and author, and I am so happy today to be here with Natasha. How are you? Uh, fine, uh, and thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for being here. Before we jump into our topic today, why don't you tell us just a little bit more about yourself and your background? Okay, thank you. Well, I'm from South Africa, and I'm currently sitting in South Africa. <laughs> so I'm a, a wife. We are married for 20 years. I've got two kids, teenagers. Um, I've been a counselor for uh, over a decade now. Uh, I'm actually a pastoral counselor. Um, I work with teenagers and families. Families is my passion, and teenagers uh, specifically, helping parents navigate that rough years through teenage years. So I love the principles that you're sharing, and I know you said you had a few more you wanted to share. Is there another one you suggest that parents should really focus on to help their teenagers? Um, yes. So let's look at, okay, so let's look at everyday teaching it to them in everyday life and building a relationship with them. So. Um, how do we set healthy boundaries and consequences so that we will be struggling with our kids? <laughs> you know, they get hurt and we don't want to see our kids hurt. That is hard. Okay. okay. Uh, and that's the thing. We need to help our kids understand that they, the toy choices as consequences are not actually because the Bible always says we shouldn't exasperate our kids. Okay. That, that's too much. <laughs> we can't do that. Okay. So everything we do, we do out of love, okay? Mm. So the ultimate biggest law or principle is love. Because mm. God says, love the Lord God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. So one of the biggest principles we want to teach our kids is to love, all right? Because God loves us so much as he gave his only son. So we want to love God first. So this is our first order. So everything we choose to do in life is based on God's principles. Yes. Now, if we don't have that, okay, God's principles and God's love, um, how do we make choices in our life then? Okay. So if we, okay, so we'll, we'll talk about that, the choices later. Let me first explain the principle of love. Love means to protect and take care of yourself, to grow to full maturity in all areas of life. Okay, love is not an emotion. I think all the parents understand and have heard that before. Love is an action. So if God says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, strength, and your neighbor as yourself, this is the first and biggest command. Can we command an emotion? So how I ask my kids this, or how you teach your kids this, say, you will go to school today and you will enjoy it. Now, you can command your child to go to school, but you can't command them to enjoy it. Okay, we can't command an emotion. So when you think about it, when God, the creator of the universe, says this is the biggest commandment, okay, it can't be an emotion. So we get to choose to love ourselves, okay, biblically, like God wants us. That means I'm going to protect myself from anything that hinders me to grow to full maturity in all areas of life, Okay. And that helps us kids to understand when they are busy with stuff, especially when this teenage peer pressure and stuff, are they protecting themselves from STDs, from unplanned pregnancy, from alcohol, from drugs, from whatever, okay? Are they loving themselves? Because when they are busy with other teenagers that are smoking or whatever they are busy with, do you think somebody that smokes cares about their lungs? Hmm. So if they don't care about their own lungs, why do they care about yours? That's yeah. why God says, Lord your God, the neighbor as yourself. So we need to be clear, as yourself, meaning it's first God, then you, and then your neighbor. So if you don't protect your lungs, you can't protect your friends. So when we teach our kids this principle, we need to show them, oh, that child loving himself, then we tend to go out and say, oh, no, um, that is sin, he's dreaming. He's sleeping around or they're watching porn or whatever we want to like show our kids. But what I love to point out to my kids is say, do they do you think they love themselves? Are they protecting mm -hmm. themselves? Are they make choices to keep themselves safe? Are they applying the principle? Okay, can you see how beautiful God made it? Because if we apply love, love covers everything. It's the biggest principle. <laughs> yeah, and I 
I love that you share that as being the first thing, because I think in scripture, we see that everywhere, you know, it, you can do all these things, but if you don't have love, you really have nothing. But also the fact that you're encouraging the kids to put things in proper order, because I find in the teenage years, it's really easy to put your friends even before yourself and for sure before God. So encouraging your kids to say, it's okay to love your friends, but first you need to love God, then you need to love yourself, and then you can love your friends. Yes. And how do we teach them? We want to teach them this even when they're younger, before they adult, teenagers, older. Okay? So how I help parents teaching this for younger toddlers, go and plant some flowers with your little girl or boy. Okay. And then the principle of love. Love is in I choose to protect this plant to grow to full maturity. If you mm. pick a flower, could you want to put it in, in a vase in your room? Do you love flowers? Now, they know most of the girls and boys will say, yes, they have flowers because they watch and enjoy it. But are you helping that flower to grow to the full blossom that they can be if they're still in the ground? So loving means saying, I'm keeping this flower in the ground. I'm nurturing it. I'm protecting it. I'm giving it food to grow to full maturity. That's love. Yeah. To help. So if a boy, if a boy dates you and he says, if you love me, I will, you will have sex with you. He's picking you and using you, and after you use, he's going to throw you away. Yeah, it's not love. Yeah. You see how we can teach it at the young age and in the older age. But if the children doesn't understand love, okay, and if we just say love is kind, love is gentle, which is beautiful, that is what love choose to do, okay. But love is first to protect yourself, and there's a choice to love so that you can love somebody else. And obviously we choose to follow Christ. So if we first love God. Yes. And I think what's key, certainly in the teenage years, is if we just say, oh, don't have sex outside of marriage, that doesn't mm -hmm. actually help them because it doesn't give them any framework or mm -hmm. well, why. And so mm -hmm. the way you're explaining it kind of gives them that why, because you're giving them a broader picture of how you know the domino effect well if you do this action then all these things might happen afterwards and so you have to look long term and see is that going to lead you where you want and so i think being able to shift our focus not to say we can't tell our kids not to do something but i think it's a lot more useful to present it in a way of saying no i'm helping you love yourself by making choices that will bring you to your, you know, like that full potential that's going to be healthier for you in the long run. Yes, yes. And uh, 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 what I'm thinking about is uh, in the uh, Old Testament, God says, my people are going under due to the lack of knowledge, okay? And because of their ignorance of not following the law, they are going under, okay? Not following the principle. Okay, so um, the thing is, it's they always say knowledge is power. Knowledge, we can't just read Bible verses and recite Bible verses and remember it. It is applied knowledge that is power. Yeah, we need to teach them that our teenagers want to know why we can't just say no, and yeah. if we don't teach them why they're going to Google it. All right, yeah. Now, and they will find the answers whatever they want, okay? And we need to teach our children that God's word is true and it's the standard to measure everything on. Maybe I can tell a story of one of my clients. And I think we as Christians are so privileged, okay? And I tell this to my kids all the time. We are so, so excited in today's day and age because it makes our lives so much easier. Because yes. we have a standard. We can make choices, guys. So I've got this client in my couple, all right? And they're in a polygamy relationship, okay? So multiple in a relationship, all right? So, and they are, they believe this is not bad, this is good. In today's, you know, fluid, every, anything can go as long as it feels good and you can choose whatever you want. I think everybody knows what I'm talking about. So anyway, in this relationship, says, okay, no, if everything's fun, why are you in my office? Basically, how can I help you? Because obviously, I, I don't think polygamy is correct, okay? 
So what, so what happened is the guy decided that he feels that it's okay to choose who he can sleep with whenever his wife agreed to a threesome, basically. And now when he's alone with the other girl, it's okay. All right? So the point is they are making up rules as they go along. Yeah. Okay? So now how are you secure in a relationship if you make rules up of how you feel and how as you go along. So the thing is, when we follow Christ, the, the word doesn't change. It's the yeah. same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. God is always the same. Yeah. Even if the world thinks they are changing, gravity is gone. God's principles still apply. Yes. So, and this is why we have so many people hurting today, because they're trying to make things work according to what they feel is right. Yes. Now, I always tell my young people I work with, I when I say my people, I mean I work with teenagers all the time, choose a spouse that loves Jesus more than you. And then they're all like, oh, how's that possible? Now, apply the law. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your neighbor as yourself. Because when your spouse loves the Lord more than you, you will always apply the principle first when any choices they make in life. So yes. you are secure and safe, all right? My kids, my son, he, uh, he likes structure and rules, okay? And he feels safe. And I think all kids, when they know what's going to happen, it's, it makes them feel safe. Yes. And, uh, and that's what God gave us. It's so exciting. If we apply it, it helps us feel secure. And I think that's a good dad. God is a good dad. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And I, I love that you said that, you know, the laws of gravity don't change. And I think that's so key for parents to understand is we may not understand fully exactly what our kids are going through because the world has changed so drastically since we were growing up. But God and who he is and the way he wants us to live our lives his laws and he himself never change. So we don't necessarily need to understand every single issue, but when we know God and we teach who he is to our kids, then that helps them apply God's truth to the experiences they have because he doesn't change even if everything around us does. Yes, and it makes the make us feel safe. I think that's so wonderful. And the thing is, there was a study done about boundaries, and um, there was kids playing in a in a school yard, okay, in a closed yard. And what they saw is just over the fence, there was a big natural environment with big trees and stuff. So they said, what what if we uh, take down the fence, so the kids have a bigger area to play in. All right. That would be good. Then they can run and there's some, so much more space. So it took, them down, it took the fence down. Interesting what happened in the study. The kids started to play closer to the building rather than further out. Hmm. Because the fence, the boundary, made them feel safe. So they instinctively wanted to feel safe. So yeah. even if we, if we think we give up, freedom isn't free, all right? The yeah. safety of God's boundary makes us freely be able to play and enjoy life in a fun way without any worries about consequences. So I think that uh, that boundary uh, is so, so exciting to teach our kids this so that they embrace that safety that God gives us. Yeah, that's such a good example of how, you know, God dis does give us that security. And I think so much the world tells us, well, you know, God has all these rules and he must not be loving because you have to do all these things. But this is such a good reminder that says, well, no, because he knows that if you step out of that boundary, you're going to get hurt. And he doesn't want us to get hurt. So he says, don't cross this line. And so it has nothing to do with being controlling and everything to do because he loves us and he doesn't want us to have lives that are full of pain and suffering because of the choices we make. Yes, yes. And, and I think we can teach our kids, even younger kids. I, 
I had one experience that we were driving in the car. We went to a, a, a sport event and there was a lot of younger kids in the car, about eight year olds. And they start talking about what the teacher said and they start talking about other religions. Now, I don't think we have a religion. We follow Jesus our Savior. It's not a religion. But anyway, they, that was the topic they had in school. And I saw this one little boy. He was struggling, okay, because uh, who's the way, okay? Why is God a dad and a good father and all of that? So this is how I explain it to him. So when we look at a sin and we tend to say we condemned and all of that, when we choose to follow Christ, okay, we need to pick up our cross and follow Jesus. We start the journey of sanctification, and that's a hard journey, okay? means that we need to choose hard, easy, the hard things, self-sacrifice, okay, we, and, and let's just make a disclaimer. It's not easy to follow Christ. <laughs> There's a yeah. lot of fun things that we say no to when we choose the hard thing, okay? The hard, easy, easy, hard principle. But then how do, when we get to heaven, we are there because we are children of God, okay? So he opens the door because he knows us. How do we explain this to a, I try to explain it to this eight-year-old. What's the difference between other faiths and us? Of course, everybody is good, okay? So does a good guy go to heaven? No, obviously not. A saved guy go to heaven person, okay? That's not the terms that the kid used. But anyway, so the point was I used the example in his everyday life. I said, now, when you go play outside with your friends and you go home and you knock on the door so that your dad opened the door, when he sees you, will he open the door? How will he know you? He said, no, I've got his surname and he knows my name. And we do things a certain way in our family so he will know when I'm there. He said, yes, he will open the door. When a stranger knocks on your dad's door, will he just open it? He said, no, okay. So you might, you might be, the people, God's people will be know the shepherd's voice, okay. So to explain this to our kids, they need to understand when we are part of God's family, we do things a certain way because this is what our family as Christians in God do. This is what we do. So I teach this in my own family and say we, our officers, that's our surname, we serve God. We watch this type of movie. We are joggers. We all go love jogging. People will know what we are stand for as persons. But as Christians, does your child know that he is labeled as a Christian? God will know he's part of the family. And, and I think it's overcomplicated by too much sins and stuff. It is actually a relationship. Our faith is a relationship with our Savior. It's not just a few actual yeah. stuff that we do. It's known by our actions, but because we love our Savior. Yeah, for sure. And I think that's so key is to help our children understand that, that even though there are boundaries and even though the Lord does give us commands, that all of it is in this, you know, back and forth relationship um, because he really does truly love us. And I, I think it's good to just like point those things out to our kids. And when things happen, we can say, look, this is God intervening, or this is the Lord loving us, or this is how God's working in our lives. And just being open about who God is, what he's done, how he helps us, and having those conversations with our teenagers, because as they get older, they want to know more about how life works. And so if we go back to the why and the how, you know, we can help our children make sense of the world, I think. Yes, definitely. And if our kids don't have a big enough why, they're going to do whatever feels good in the moment, okay? They're not going to choose hard if God is not the ultimate why, okay? They say, if you have a big enough why, you will figure out the how. Mm. Now, I remember uh, my son, my own son, was very young, uh, in like six, five, six year old. And I was teaching him some of God's principles, and the teacher called me in at his play school. And said, uh, you know what, the way you are teaching your child, and it's a Christian school, I just want to add this, okay? They were playing some other game about Ben 10, okay? Then you turn into another power or something. So as a believer in Christ, I don't believe we turn into other things. I think we are Holy Spirit filled. 
okay? So I was trying to teach my son, whatever we are busy with, songs we are listening, games that we are playing, okay? We choose God, okay? We choose, we are filled with the Holy Spirit. So he wasn't playing with other boys that were turning into a different spirit, whatever they are calling it. I don't know. I don't, it's maybe just boy playing, but I was teaching my son a principle. And the teacher told me, you know what? Your child is going to suffer through life if you teach him like this. And I was shocked that she said that. So uh, I told this, if I tell him, okay, just go and play with these boys, pretend, but don't worry, okay, uh, we are still Christians, but you, you can uh, compromise your faith when you're on the playground to be accepted. All right, what am I saying to my son? All right, so then I said, well, if he's then 16, and everybody is sleeping around. And if he wants friends, he needs to watch porn and sleep around. So, okay, let's put our faith to the side and just sleep around so that you have friends. We are not teaching our kids easy principles, but it is principles that will, teach, uh, will make them followers of Christ and successful in life. So we must understand we are on a hard journey, okay? Uh, but we need to teach it in all of life as they go through and it is a hard journey for our kids my son is a teenager now and i'm very proud of him he's making wise choices and still silly ones in between but he's still on the journey to teach him and my uh, all the other kids uh, to make wise choices totally and i think we could probably talk about this all day because there's just so many good amazing biblical principles and things that we can help our kids understand but i really appreciate the principles that you've shared with us today um, but before we go, if people want to kind of connect with you and get to know you more, how can they find you online? Uh, they can go to my website, www.letsexplain.org, or I'm on Facebook as well, Natasha Let's Explain. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm on Facebook. I'm not active on Facebook. My website, uh, all my details is there. Uh, I do teach parents biblical principles and how to teach them this when it comes specifically to sex <laughs> and making their hard choices and uh, having positive impressions on our kids when it comes to sex. Because we need to realize. Okay, they're out there in the world every day. Yeah. If you have one boring explanation to the children, say, don't do that, you are fighting against hundreds of millions of messages out there. And I yeah. love what Bob, uh, uh, Rob Parslin says. He said, in, when we were young, you were saying just when we were young, <laughs> all right, if we imagine we were down a corridor of doors, and on one door it says uh, unplanned pregnancy, teen pregnancy, STDs, um, skin, drugs, whatever, okay? That doors would be closed and you would hear about somebody doing it in far distance, but you were never confronted. I remember in school, I never saw the girl that got pregnant. I don't know even who she was, okay? But today, in today's society, that door, that corridor, all the doors are open. And the kids are having fun playing inside and say, what's the problem? Why are you standing in the hall? Why are you not enjoying? What's wrong with you? The yeah. world has changed for our kids. And yeah. we need to stay up as Christians. We can't just tell them, no, don't have sex. Just because God said so. They need an answer to their why. They need an question. And they are supposed to ask questions. God's word and God created these answers to all our questions. Let's go and investigate that together with our kids. And yeah. it's a fun journey. Yeah, no, it is. And I, yeah, I really appreciate what you've shared. And I'll make sure to add those links so people can get to know more about those principles through you in the show notes. Um, thank you for joining me today and just having this conversation. I know just a few principles that you covered can help quite a few parents. And so if any of you have any questions, make sure to let me know in the comments and uh, we'll try to answer them. But just this encouragement to, you know, teach our children these principles in ways that they connect to. And I love what you said. We have to give them a big enough why. Otherwise, they 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 don't know why. And somebody else will give it to them. And it, chances are it's not going to be biblical. Um, so that's why we need to be proactive about it and just be engaged with our kids. Yes. <laughs> Couldn't get <Yeah>. better. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining me, everybody. And um, yeah, we'll see you in the next episode. Bye.